Hey, good morning, gang. Welcome to another segment of Bald Eagle Fishing Adventures. And uh, so today, obviously you can tell we're not fishing, um, but something really important I wanted to go over with all of you. And uh, I wanted to kind of give you an idea about how I set up my hoochies uh, for King Salmon. And I'm very blessed to have a couple of really good friends of mine that are commercial fishermen, and they've shared some of their tips and ideas over the years with me, and I'm going to share them with you guys. Um, no real big changes from the standard hoochies that most guys are out there fishing with. Most are effective, um, but sometimes there's a few little things that you learn along the way that can give you an edge. and. Really, I mean, that's all we're looking for out there, right? It's just a little of an edge to help along. So one thing I wanted to kind of go over with you guys, maybe some of you know, maybe some of you don't know. Commercial guys really don't bother using bait. They don't use anchovies. They don't use herring. Um, it's too much of a nightmare for them to have to be working those baits, and they're using so many multiple different lines. Um, it would be just a nightmare. So most of them are just using spoons. Um, they're using hoochies and um, you know stuff like that, uh, artificials, uh, it's just much easier for them. And obviously they do very, very well uh, using artificials. So um, one of my buddies in particular loves ho hoochies. That's pretty much his go-to on his boat. Um, he does use spoons, but anyways, let's get into the heat of this stuff and let's, let's see what we've got going on here. So. I basically use, we're going to start with the flashers, and the flashers I use are 360 uh, Pro Troll. Uh, you can find these on Amazon, I'll have links to them. Um, the red trimmed one, uh, I use early season, so April, May, even June. Um, and the red trim works well, especially, you know, you've got krill in the water, um, I don't really know how much of the red actually makes a big difference if you were to throw this on the green instead. I just kind of go with what I've been doing and what kind of works for me. Um, one thing I do like and you want to kind of make sure is that on these Pro Troll, these 360s, um, that like this film here is a glow in the dark. And that's really nice, especially, you know, your fishing could be down to 100 feet, 150 feet. The last video I put out of that, my first salmon of the year, was at 150 feet down on the downrigger. And I believe that a little bit of this glow in the dark did help. Um, so one side is glow in the dark, the other side is just a standard flash. So uh, like I said, I'll have links to this stuff on Amazon of where I picked these up. It's under 20 bucks, I believe, for one of these. And uh, You'll want to definitely get the one that's got the little fin on here. I'm hoping you guys can get that. Um, but this fin makes it really nice for slow troll. And what I mean by slow troll is maybe one, one and a half miles an hour. Um, the other ones that don't have this, sometimes they're not really effective until you get a well above two miles an hour, even pushing three miles an hour. And it does have the little sensor here. Um, that supposedly puts out like a distress signal or something like that of a bait fish, uh, a little electronic uh, little thing that happens, whatever that. I don't know how much of that's real, but you know what? I'll take whatever I can get, right? I mean, if it helps, it helps. So anyways, so the flasher. This is early season, again, April, May, and June. Now we get into the thick of the bigger fish, getting into the fall run, and that's starting around middle the end of July, August for sure, and September, and even into October. And this is a Pro Troll as well, green trim flasher. Same idea with the um, glow in the dark and then the chrome. And I switch, and, and when I say green, I mean, there is green, but this is actually, um, well, what do they call it? Chartreuse. Um, and I'm a big fan of chartreuse color. I, I just, that's, Seems to be my favorite color for, for going after salmon uh, when we're talking about late summer and uh, getting into early fall. Anyways, same idea. Got the little fin, got the little sensor thing here. So, okay, enough on that. That's, that's on the flashers. Oh, and hey, by the way, if you guys got any questions on any of this stuff, please send me a, a message and I'll answer you back with the best knowledge I have on this um, so everybody's on the same page. Also, too, on any of these flashers, make sure that you're using these beads, um, at least three to four beads. I prefer 
This is an older bead one that I have. I have them up to six beads now. Um, I think this makes a really big difference, uh, and I have them on both ends of my flasher. Uh, you get any kind of junk, especially jellyfish or any kind of little seaweed, and it binds up a couple of these. You still have two or three others that are working just fine. So bead chains, a must. Um, now, for years, I used the traditional size of line or length of line and pound test, which was uh, running around 36 to 40 inches of, uh, of leader line to my hoochie. And I was running about 40 pound test. And it worked. Um, maybe not great, but it worked. I did catch fish with that. Uh, then I got a little piece of advice from uh, one of my commercial buddies. And he said, go a little bit longer on your line. He goes, um, we're pushing somewhere between 45 to 60 inches on, on our leaders um, from our 360 flashers. And I said, yeah, but you're going to lose your, you know, what the, the spinning rotation on your hoochie, the, the, the activation of it, um, because that's what typically the little bit shorter of the line, you're going to have a little more aggressiveness motion on the hoochie. And he said, step up your, your pound test. So if you're using 40, he said, look at 60 to 80. And I was like, wow, really? For salmon, that, that'll be okay. He goes, we catch them all the time doing that. I said, all right, I trust you. Uh, so that's the fishing line mono that I have here is uh, this is 60 pound test. And um, I have, I've gone up as heavy as 80 pound test. And um, I'm running 60 inches. So, I mean, here's the end of my, my, uh, my flasher here. And I mean, you can see how much line right here to my hoochie. And I mean, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a lot. I'm trying to do a span on here, but it works. And this, is, this rig is the actual rig that I caught that last salmon on. So, um, and I do the same. I may actually go a little bit shorter uh, for the ones in the summertime, um, when we're getting into the August time and so forth, I may go, um, you know, there's something you kind of have to play around with what kind of seems to be working and not, but I may drop down to 50 inches, just take 10 inches out, out of that and drop down to 50 inches. I don't really go any less than 50 inches on my leader. Um, and because I'm, you know, using the heavier fishing line, uh, pound test, uh, it really doesn't take away from the way that the hoochie works. And I still get a great movement on the hoochie and the flasher's far enough away not to kind of spook the salmon at the same time. So it's kind of this little dance that we do with these salmon. I mean, you, you want to attract them, but you don't want to scare them out either. And it, it can be just this bizarre little dance. And, you know, it's really kind of playing with it a little bit to get it dialed. And so anyways, 50 to 60 inches is the leader I run, running around between 60 to 80 pound test. You guys will have to play around with that, see what works best for you. Um, okay, now with that being said, and mono is the only, you know, mono, any of that type of fishing line, um, you know, braid, you don't want to use braid as your leader. Uh, I, that's just a, a, a no-go for me, at least. I don't know, maybe some of you are might be doing that, but I don't think you're going to get enough whipping. Uh, it's, it's just not going to, it's not taunt enough. So stick with the mono. Um, let's see. So on hoochies, bazillion different colors of hoochies, if you ever looked at them. Um, you know, my favorite is purple haze. Uh, I love purple haze. Um, you know, that just seems to work the best for me. The eyes, actually right around the eyes here will glow uh, in the water. So that's really cool. Um, but purple haze seems to be the one that puts a lot of the meat on the boat um, outside. And as you guys know, I love my FBRs. FBR with an anchovy, chartreuse FBR, I should say. And if you guys haven't checked that out, I have one making the perfect FBR. Check that video out. I go through about knot tying and, and the snell knots on my hooks and everything else. I'm not going to get into it with this video. You can go check that one out. I go through the whole tying process of that. Um, but anyway, so on these hoochies, 
I carry three hoochies on board. One is a cop car looking one. So it's, it's black and white, black and grayish with speckles, uh, kind of a goldish uh, flakes on there. And um, they're made by, I believe, Gold Star. Um, they, they're about the same length as these, which is, I think these things are about three inches, four inches. Let's see. Uh, these I'm going to say right about four inches. So these hoochies are four inches long. And um, they, they, they work perfect. Uh, the cop car one, I use that if there is some bait in the water and the salmon just don't seem to be taking the bait, you know, as far as anchovies or herring, I'll put that on. Sometimes it works for me. Sometimes it doesn't. It's a 50-50. It's a um, the other one that I do fairly well on is the blue hoochie. And the blue hoochie is kind of a bluish with some gray and white. Um, and that one is a glow in the dark. And that's really great if you're going to be fishing deep. So, you know, I would say anything deeper than 100 feet, you might want to try that. I've caught fish on that. But this is my workhorse when it comes to hoochies, purple haze. I Obviously, I've caught that salmon at 150 feet on this purple haze. So that works really well. Um, so, and the purple haze is pretty much all I use when July, August, and September roll around. And I, here's the thing for, for my hoochies when I decide that I'm going to use hoochies. If there is a squid spawn, and we normally see squid spawns around end of July, in through August, and even into parts of September. And when there's a squid spawn, they're usually going to happen somewhere between around 60 to 90 feet of water. And that's the area that I'll be working. And I will put these hoochies on when I know there's a squid spawn. And these things are absolutely freaking deadly. I mean, you want to talk about limiting out in a half an hour with two big, beautiful salmon? It has happened several times to me. Um, they absolutely go ape, you know what, over this stuff. So... Anyways, that's, that's a real, that's when this, I, I feel, becomes really effective. Um, and sometimes you'll find that you're, you know, there's anchovies in the water and maybe, you know, they're just, they're just not feeding on the anchovies. They're feeding on that squid. And uh, it, one of the things, if they're feeding on the squid too, is you're going to want to fish this deep. And that's when you're, you're going to be using this as well on these, uh, on, on the shark trues. What I do is in about most of my fish that I took that came on the hoochie last year is that I was down probably somewhere around, I was in probably about 85, 80 to 85 feet of water. And I was fishing this rig five feet off the bottom. And you really have got to be paying attention to your gear when you're dealing with a rocky area. and You got a 10 pound uh, downrigger weight on. I mean, you don't want to get snagged. So you got to really, you know, anywhere between that five and 10 feet from the bottom. If you're really into a jagged bottom, maybe come up to 10 feet, but I wouldn't come any higher than 10 feet. You want to stay as low as you can. The salmon are hanging out towards that bottom and they're munching away on that squid. Deadly. This is absolutely deadly in that point. Okay. Now, something that I think is an absolute game changer. So I want to kind of show you. So you see my hoochie kind of stops right there, right? And now it's a little too, it's a little too high up. But what we have here is these things are line locks. You see this little plastic thing right here? And this is actually called a uh, slide lock and it is made by Wigglefin. So I'm gonna put that up there. I will have a link to this. I picked these up at Outdoor Pro Shop and these things are a true game changer. Um, these little round, uh, little plastic stops, there's a little tiny hole in the center of it. And you've got to squeeze these with a pair of pliers to open that hole. And then you can slide your line in, in through that hole. And But once they're in, I mean, they lock in place. I mean, I'm putting some decent pressure and they don't move. But if you put a lot of pressure, you can slide them, as you can just tell I just did. And slide them back down carefully. Don't put the hook through your hand. Um, and that makes it a really big difference where this hoochie is going to sit, right? Okay, now for me, I want, I want you guys to get a good look at this because this is about where I have my hook set up. And I run the double hooks. And you can see I have one going one way, one going the other way, and they're tied by my snail knot. And again, the snail knot, you can go and you can check out my uh, FBR video. 
Um, I go through the whole process of tying these snell knots. And so you can learn that there. But what I want is I want the end of this skirt right at the first hook, right at the, the J of that hook. That's where I want it. And then this is my stinger hook. And you can see I, that goes well past. Do you, most of my fish come on this stinger. I would say 80% of my fish come on this stinger hook. A lot of times they will not catch this one. Um, because this bait is rotating in the water very erratically that a lot of times they miss the second hook. I've had them get both hooks in their mouth and that's when it's sheer genius when that happens. But a lot of times they just get that stinger. And the problem that most guys are doing and gals and my, myself included in this is we have this first hook buried way up here into the body. And you're never going to, I mean, really seldom are you going to get them to hook, uh, unless they happen to come in and take that bait like this, you're not ever going to get them to get that second hook. And if the stinger hook is right here at the base, you're going to miss a lot of strikes too. You're going to see a little pumping on there and they may be just getting in that little bit of lip and they're not going to stick. So you want that stinger hook way down here. So that gets into their mouth and they ain't coming out. And then there's a whole nother importance to this. So as you can tell with all of my hooks that uh, either be FBR or with the hoochie is I have them very close to each other. They're about a quarter inch from the J, the, the base of the J right here where my finger's at to this eye is right about maybe a quarter to three eighths somewhere in there. You want them fairly close. And that gives you a really great chance. I don't want them touching but it gives you a really great chance of getting both those hooks in their mouth. Um, anyways, so that's that part of it. Uh, the other part to this is these flashers and a lot of the rigs out there that I, I've come across be either FBR or flashers like the 360. These things spin in a counter clock rotation. Okay. So, they're, they're going in the water like this, counterclockwise, and they're spinning in that direction. Now, you have to kind of think about mechanics of this because when I started using these flashers, one of the things I found with these flashers is that with straight J-hooks, which is how most J-hooks are sold, they don't come with an offset on them. Um, the problem with them is they'll get into the, 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 either the roof of the mouth or into the jaw, of the, uh, the bottom jaw of the fish, and these things are spinning. And that's why a lot of people don't like using them because they're rotating around like this, putting a lot of pressure and friction on the hook inside that mouth of the fish. That fish is pulling back and it starts shaking its head, especially if it's upward or maybe a downward, wherever that hook is kind of Im embedded into. And these damn things can pop that hook right out of its mouth. Had it happen, Countless times, it will turn your gut, it'll make you want to call it a day, and it just yeah, pisses you off to no end. And I've had this happen to me, I've had it happen to a lot of my buddies, and it wasn't until you really kind of start thinking about the mechanics of it that you kind of start thinking, okay, I need to make a better mousetrap. So if this thing is spinning counterclockwise in the water, and it is spinning while you're even got that fish on and you're reeling and that fish is pulling back and this thing's making that big whipping feeling in the water. What you have to think about is how your hooks are. So standard J hooks, if you look at this, and I'm gonna try to get this up there. So the point of my hook is offset and that is how you want them. Both of mine are. Both of, always my, my hooks are offset and I have to bend them in that direction. I hold, I hold one hook, you know, the base of it down here with a pair of pliers and I'll take and I'll bend this, this, this top part of the hook here, the, the, the pointy part to, so if it, the, if the pointy part is facing towards me, I'll want to bend it to the left. Okay. And the reason to the left, here's, here's the mechanics of it. So it's bent to the left. Both of them are. Okay. Both of these are offset to the left, going this direction, the, the tip of, of this hook. And I sure hope that my explanation of this is, is coming out, but if not, again, send me an email. So 
The tips are off to the direction. They're not actually going straight down the shank of the hook. So they're not, they're not going down straight here anymore. They're actually offset. You might be able to see it better on that one here. Anyways, it's, it's, and in this, because I'm showing it to you, it's actually off to the right here. But like I said, if these points are facing towards me and that's usually how I'm bending them, it's, I bend it to the left. So if you think about this flasher is spinning counterclockwise. So kind of like left hand rotation, correct? And it's going, you want these hooks in left hand rotation as well, that counter, because you want these hooks to act like a corkscrew. So think about it. Here comes this fish. This thing is rotating in the water to the left from because, due to the flasher. And that fish comes up and nails this hook. This hook then is going to start turning and the pressure is always wanting to get that tip further and further buried into the jaw of that fish. If they're just a straight, you know, J hook, running right down the shank like they're sold, there's a great chance that it's not gonna get that corkscrew drilling in there. It could, when that mouth shakes, when, that, when the salmon shakes its, its head and that mouth opens up, that, that hook could get popped out due to the flasher. Again, happened to me many a times. So that is the mechanics of this. You want that corkscrew rotation, that hook is getting further and further buried into that jaw of the fish. The chances of you losing that fish become a lot less. So anyways, I hope that makes sense. And um, they, it, it, that's what works for me. Now, I think one of the last things I want to go over, and I think it's absolutely critical, is the sharpness of your hooks. Okay. This is where you can just take a little bit of time. It doesn't take a ton of time, but if your hooks are, if your hooks, I always like to make sure mine are needle sharp. If your hooks are not needle sharp, you know, the chances of you getting a really great hook set are, you know, minimal. Um, you want them really, really sharp. And what I mean by really, really sharp is you want to be able to take, pardon me, you want to take that hook, put it on your thumbnail, and it should grab. When you go to pull on your, on your, on your, on your, uh, when that hook, the, the tip of the hook is on your, on your thumbnail and you go and start applying a little pressure for it to try to slide off and it doesn't slide, it's grabbing like mine is right now, you got a nice sharp needle hook and that is going to be fantastic and that's what you want. And you know, a lot of times I've had hooks that I've taken out of a brand new package and they're not razor sharp or needle point sharp. Um, so, you know, take a little bit of time. If your hooks are really dull, either replace them or get a file. They have files for hooks and file that tip so it's already nice and sharp. And then get yourself some 220 sandpaper. Um, I keep this stuff on board. I just get it at Home Depot cheap and uh, rip me off a few pieces, keep some on board the boat. But typically I have them at home. I always bring my hooks home and uh, before my next outing and just make sure everything is, you know, sano, it's dialed. Um, if you actually look from my last fishing trip, I don't know if you can see, but there is a little bit of rust on uh, some of these hooks here. You can really see it probably on this one. You see there's a little bit of rust. Now the, the hook itself is still nice and sharp, but it's not, it's, it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually grabbing the thumbnail and that's what you want. Um, but this rust, this is no good. So take yourself a little bit of that sandpaper and just clean it up. Uh, I mean, it takes nothing. So I'm doing the worst hook right now with the rust on there. And I mean, with just in a little bit, it already has removed most of that, that rust off of there. And I mean, you know, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't take much. Just give it a little, just watch your hands. Don't, uh, don't uh, stick yourself. I do it all the time. But anyways, just do a nice little cleanup on it. You want that hook nice and smooth. Um, that's just about there. It needs a little bit more, but I don't want to bore you guys completely. And then with the tip, you do want to still use some of this, even though your tip might be needle point sharp. I just take and I go like this. I always want to go the direction of the hook, of the point of the hook. So kind of going away from it like this. Don't go back like that. Just go like this. 
and make sure it catches that, that tip real nice on there and work your way all the way around. And you know, you'll make that thing just like the day it should be brand new and beautiful again. And then you'll have a nice razor sharp or a needle point sharp hook again. Guys, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, again, if you guys got any questions on this stuff, send them to me. I'll answer them the best I can, or at least I'll find out for you. Um, like I said, I don't know how much really big difference between commercial and, uh, you know, recreational guys or, you know, as far as hoochies go. I know that there was things that I was able to improve because I had a couple commercial guys that were gracious enough and thoughtful enough and, you know, just knowing that we're all fishermen out there and was willing to, to help me out a little bit. And that's what I'm doing with you guys. You know, listen, everything that I ever talk about or show you guys is because somebody was nice enough, kind enough to give me a little bit of tidbit of information. And I think it's sinful if you don't share that information with others. Um, you know, just to keep it to yourself is just, I, I, that's just not my, my deal. Um, my deal is to share, share your knowledge, you know, help everyone out, especially now in this day and age where fuel prices are absolutely ballistic. I want to see every fisherman go out, have a great day on the water, get home safe and come home with something, come home with some fish. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And so if we can help each other out a little bit along the way, I think it's a good blessing all the way around. Until next time, guys, love all of you. If you found that this, uh, this video was uh, entertaining, maybe not so much entertaining, but at least had some good thoughtful information on there that may be able to help you on your next outing, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And uh, I promise I'll keep bringing you more and more videos as we go. Hopefully as soon as mother nature allows me, I'm gonna be back out on that uh, briny blue and uh, bringing some more fish home. Take care gang, love all of you. I'll see you on the next fishing video.